okay, okay, believe me Depends on me, depends on me, will you kill me? The lounge fly, the lounge fly, the fly you bring me Hey guys and gals, what is going on? John Milton here, I'm back today for another video for y'all. Uh, from fir first and foremost, I just want to wish y'all a very happy new year. I hope, um, hope this year is the most uh, very prosperous and very successful for y'all, because um, that's what it's all about. And um, yeah, it's been a while everyone, since I've um, done one of these videos, and um, you know, I thought with the, with the new year rolling in, you know, it's, it's time to, you know, start doing one of these videos again. Now, um, this is just going to be a, um, a channel update for everyone regarding what is going to be coming on my channel this year and also um, some of the albums in particular that I'm looking forward to in 2014. Now, um, yeah, what is basically going to be coming on my channel, guys and gals, in this coming year is basically like some more album reviews. Like, I've got, I'm working on one at the moment which will hopefully be coming out either tomorrow or the day after. And I'm also hoping to do some like, you know, like, sort of like build on like some series as the, you know, as I said, that I've started and also some that I'm also wants to, you know, start from brand new. Like, for instance, like I'm hoping to do like some sort of like band biographies. I like basically I like talk about like bands and then, um, like their, like, talk about, like, their entire career and, and like, um, how, you know, um, sort of, like, what happened, like, throughout the course of their career, you know, like, looking at their, um, studio albums and stuff, and, you know, and this was the project I was talking about doing, but I said I couldn't because it was, like, um, really expansive, so, like, I haven't, I still haven't yet decided on, like, how, you know, I'm going to structure it, but hopefully it's be soon. I've got some great bands in store that, uh, well, the regard is great, you know, for which band, which biographers I'm hoping to, you know, conduct some on. I think that'd be really cool to my channel, and um, I hope you all enjoy it too. And um, I'm also hoping to do some more guitar covers. Now, um, I'm currently learning, or attempting to learning some some more, um, too. It's just a case of, you know, because, you know, I've got, you know, it, it takes time to learn, um, you know, guitar piece, but, you know, like this year's, like, you know, I'm willing to put the effort in and uh, try and get some out there for you guys and girls. So um, a bit of sort of mixture, like you know, range from like the alternative scene for the 90s to like a hard rock, classic rock. It could be anything. You know. It just depends on what my mind, you know, feels like doing. Like what I originally intended for this was, you know, to do some abstract covers. Like when I looked on the internet before I did the um, L7 Diet Pill cover, I realised that like no one else, you know, on the internet had um, done a cover of the song Diet Pill by L7 put on YouTube. And I thought there was a gap there, you know, and hopefully I filled, you know, it was, it was the first guitar cover and there were a few, you know, it's a bit shaky, well, you know, but, you know, there's a chance to improve, you know, you just, you just learn from, you know, what you've done, it's, it wasn't bad, I guess, and, um, but that's just me saying, you know, y'all might think differently, but, you know, <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's, um, I think that'd be really cool. And, um, yeah, some of the, um, you know, like, I'm starting to think, like, you know, my else is doing some popular songs as well, so it's just like, you know, I, I do know some popular songs up by heart, but I was a little, like, reluctant to put them out there because, you know, there's been, it might have been done, like, a million times before, you know, and, um, I'm still not, like, 100% sure whether, um, I'm going to include them, you know, as, like, standalone, like, cover songs or as, like, um, you know, part of, like, the, the, the guitar lesson tutorial video, which, was supposed to, which will be coming soon in this new year. Um, and yeah, so there's good, to, in relation to the albums that I'm really looking forward to coming out this year, you know, there are quite a few. I mean, I had a good look on the web to see um, which um, albums could potentially be released this year. Now, uh, the big one for me personally is, is from Tool because Tool are, you know, Tool are one of my most favorite bands of all time and it's been seven long years. Well, actually, it's a bit eight this year, eight long years since the release of 2006's 10,000 Days. And um, yeah, it's, it's just been a while, I mean, you know, most of the Tools releases, you know, most of their songs are just phenomenal. You know, they're just like kings of the progressive metal realm, I mean, their, their songs sometimes take you on like, you know, really, um, like, really awesome journeys. And, um, you know, hopefully they'll be, they'll be able to deliver, you know, even more, like, amazing progressive pieces of music with their upcoming CD. Uh, which is still untitled, and um, yeah, it's been eight long years, so hopefully they won't disappoint. 
and I'm also hoping for, I'm also hoping for something unique with the packaging for um, that, that particular release as well, because um, you know, Ten Thousand Days have those like stereoscopic glasses, which you know could be used to view like three D images inside the um, album packaging artwork, which I thought was like really unique. It, you know, it just shows because Tool, like you know, they're not afraid to like push boundaries and stuff. You know, with both their music and their artwork, you know, their, their artwork's always been like a little different and. and um, you know, a little different ever since like the Up Here EP was released all the way back in 1992. And uh, I've also got a list on here for you guys and girls, guys, which albums I'm forward to coming out in 2014. We have releases from the likes of Bruce Springsteen, who's, you know, regarded as one of the, you know, a classic rock pioneer, you know, has produced many great albums and great songs, you know, such as, you know, the classic Born in the USA and, and stuff, you know, is, you know, I, I know this, this dude is really held in high regard by a lot of people. And uh, this new album's going to be called High Hopes, and it'll be released very shortly, I, I imagine. I think it's like either Monday or something, so yeah, I hope whoever picks that up will um, enjoy it. I'm not... I, I do like Bruce Springsteen's music, but I haven't, you know, I'm not that big of a fan enough to, you know, pick up his... Well, I don't know. I may give it a listen, like a try before you buy sort of thing, and I'll, I'll see. But yeah, Bruce Springsteen, High Hopes is coming out very shortly, guys and girls, and whoever picks it up, hope they enjoy it. And uh, yeah, and so they'll get to the second one on this list, which is Stampede of the Disco, the Stampede of the Disco albums by Limp Bizkit. Now, now I know this album was too, so it's been released like um, last year sometime. I can't believe I used that word. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's like um, it said it's good by coming out sometime. Like it was announced like either like last year or you know sometime earlier, like earlier last year or the year the year before. I mean, you know the faults Girl Cobra. I mean Girl Cobra, like you know it's sort of like welcome Limp Bizkit back to like the, the scene because they contain you know some of them are like you know trademark sound that's sort of like held in high acclaim by fans, you know, as opposed to like their latter work from like albums such as like Results May Vary or The Unquestionable Truth Part 1. And um, yeah, Gold Cobra was a good return, you know, for Lip Biscuit and you know, hopefully Stampede of the Disco Elephants will not disappoint whenever it decides to be released. Then everyone get to the band U2. Now um, I know it's been four years since... four years? Five years? Is it five years since... No, no, line, no line on the horizon came out. It's been a while, but no, no line on the horizon was cool because it was different. I mean, the songs like albums which like, um, is it get on your boots, get your boots on or something? And um, yeah, it, that was really cool. Sort of like sort of like, sort of like cool like psychedelic edge, a bit like you know like Latter era Beatles sort of like sort of like sort of like influenced. And um, you know, I think it added to like make a really good you know, song and a, you know, a definite highlight of that particular album. There are also some other, like, great songs on that, on that particular release too, you know, that showcase, like, the classic U2 sound, which, you know, has always been, you know, revered through, you know, the course of their career. I mean, the tour for No Line on the Horizon was cool too, because you had, like, the, the U2 360 tour, which had, like, something like a revolving stage or something, and I thought that was really cool. I mean, the No Line on the Horizon was a great album. I mean, the artwork was a little more, it's like a little square, like the, the line and the sea, but um, it it was really cool, and uh, hopefully, you know, the U2's new album is currently untitled, but, you know, hopefully whenever it comes out, this will be amazing. So, now we we'll get on to ACDC. Now, ACDC have not released an album since 2008's Black Ice, which, you know, was amazing. It was like eight years between um, Stiff Upper Lip, which was released in 2000, and Black Ice in 2008. You know, and ACDC still showcased the classic, you know, like Aussie sound, like, you know, that hard rock, you know, sort of like basic three-card hard rock just makes you... It just it just sounds really cool, you know, from classic, you know, Angus Young, you know, is one of the most influential guitarists of all time. <coughs> and um yeah, hopefully if A C D C do release now a new studio on the that'd just be amazing. I'd imagine it won't follow, you know, won't differ too far from, you know, the standard A C D C formula which we've all come to expect from the band. But you know, as, as long as it sounds good, then, you know, that's that's been the cue with all, you know, the other A C D C releases. So um, yeah, hopefully this uh, hopefully A C D C's new C D will follow suit and um, be another great um, return because it's been you know six years since uh, Black Ice came out this year so um, yeah it's, it'll be you know close to the break between Stiff Upper Lip and Black Ice which has a seven to eight years so um, yeah hopefully if ACD should be released in the album this year it'll you know not be as long as the eight years between Stiff Upper Lip and Black Ice and um, hopefully you know the album will rock you know, as most of their other releases do. Now we've on to Blink-182. Now, um, Blink-182 released their last album, Neighbourhoods, in 2010, I believe. 
and um, I didn't really take to it, you know. It it just, like, Tom DeLonge and uh, Mark Hoppus of uh, Travis Barker, you know, they sort of, like, the voice, like, Tom DeLonge's, like, Angels and Airways, like, side project, like, it sort of, like, took and taken his, like, both staff from Outbreak and Blink-182. Whereas with, you know, like, classic Blink-182 releases, such as, like, their, like, self-titled release, or it was called Blink-182, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the real stuff was just, like, Edinburgh State or Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. You know, it just showed, like, sort of, like, a youthful sense of nation. I thought that's something lacking on neighbourhoods. I feel they'll probably continue in the same vein of, like, you know, heading down a mature path, but although Blink-182, you never know, so, you know, I'm, I'm holding out for that release, you know. Blink-182's new record is currently untitled, but hopefully we'll get, you know, a release date if, you know, close to the time in which, you know, it gets it gets released, which will hopefully be some time this year. And uh, ACDC's new, re new record, guys, is currently untitled, too. And then, um... We get to The Cult, who, you know, The Cult are a classic British band, you know, they have songs such as, like, you know, She Sells Sanctuary, which is just, like, an absolute classic, so, yeah, hopefully The Cult's new CD will be amazing, too, that's currently untitled, and uh, I might check it, I might check that out when it comes out, and I'm, I haven't really listened to much of The Cult, but, you know, the songs that I've heard have been really good, so, you know, hopefully this new release, you know, just reaffirm their status as, like, cult heroes. See what I <laughs> And um, now we we'll get to Foo Fighters. Now it's, it's been um, two years, going on three years this year, guys and girls, since Foo Fighters released 2011's Wasting Light album, which was a phenomenal return. You know, Echo Silence, Patience and Grace for their 2007 release was good, but Wasting Light took it to a whole new, a whole new level. Like, it's, sort of, it's sort of like something that was sort of like rock and roll approach, you know, that I really dig, which is basically you know, like, it was basically recorded in Dave Grohl's garage, you know, as opposed to, like, Studio 606, you know, and it sort of, like, helps that sort of, like, raw, sort of, like, vintage, you know, just just jamming out, you know, uh, vibe, you know, shine through, and uh, Western Light was just, it had, like, a great sound to it as well, you know, overall, it was, it was very powerful, and, you know, Dave Grohl's a master of both, you know, the guitar and the drums, so, um, yeah, whatever the Foo Fighters decide to do with their new release, if it comes out this year, you know, hopefully it'll be, you know, really, really good. And that's currently the title, too. I mean, a lot of the albums, you know, that I'm looking forward to in 2014 have not yet been given the title because, you know, it's it's unclear as to when they'll be released. But hopefully they'll come, you know, sometime this year and um, we can all enjoy them. And uh, I'll hopefully be here to review them for you guys and girls. And then we get on to um, Godsmack. Now, I've been, I'm a sort of like medium sized fan of Godsmack. You know, I like their debut album, you know. They do have like some sort of like, um, you know, good songs, you know, splat across the course of, course of their career. I mean, the sort of like uh, Metallica sound, especially like vocal wise. And, um, you know, you also get some very like, you know, awesome sounding guitarists. Like, you know, I just, I just sort of like that, like, distinct vocal style. It's kind of like, you know, it comes, besides describing that actually, you know, doing it myself, but, you know, I'm not going to, you know, do that because, you know, I, I just sound silly. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's just basically like, you know, Godsmack's vocal style rings reminiscent of Metallica, you know, a very, you know, you can hear in their music the very Metallica influenced, so, um, yeah, hopefully then new CD and it comes out will be really, really good. I mean, I like the song The Enemy from, uh, I think the album was called Four or something, like IV, Four, um, I was featured on a WWE game and I thought it was really, really cool. And, uh, you know, their song Voodoo, oh, that is an awesome song. You know, it's just like those, those driving, like, beats, you know. It's, it's, I just like a lot of Godsmack's tunes. So hopefully when their new album is released, you know, it'll be really, really good. And then we got on to uh, Guns N' Roses. Oh, Guns N' Roses. Wow. Um, well, Chinese Democracy, you know, it took 15 years or something ridiculous like that to come out, you know. It was sort of like, it was just hyped up, like, way too much, you know, like, you, you know, it's... When it came, finally came out, I do like Chinese democracy. It sort of like shows like an industrial rock sort of sound. Sort of like some of like, you know, bands like Nine Inch Nails, for instance. But I know, like, Chinese democracy was not, you know, held in high regard by some fans simply because it took so long, you know, to, you know, get here. And also the fact that, it, you know, it didn't... You know, what it promised to be, like, you know, the world's greatest album, like, it's going to, like, literally, like, shake the earth and, like, move it and for its very foundations. Like, no, that wasn't the case. It's just music. Music's very powerful, but I don't think it has the power to be, like, literally earth-shattering. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's questionable whether Guns N' Roses are released to be on this show. I mean, Guns N' Roses have not been the same since, you know, the original lineup, such like, you know, your Slash, your Duff McKagan, 
I mean, I, you know, DJ Ashbar is a great guitar player, but, you know, I just I just don't feel the band's really been the same since, you know, the original lineup left and Axel Rose went across. I mean, Axel Rose is an arsehole, to be honest, you know, he's just, Axel Rose is just not a very, you know, nice dude, but, you know, as long as the music's good, then, you know, I, I judge the band, I don't judge people, you know, I judge, I judge bands based on the music they produce, not on the people that they are. But um, yeah, it's been a very surprise to me if Guns N' Roses released a new studio album this year. I mean, it's been, it took 15 years, like I said, for Chinese Democracy to come out. So, you know, we're, we're, I'm not, I'm not, you know, holding my breath on that one. But, you know, it it depends where to see. But, you know, anything could happen. That's the that's great thing about a brand new year. You know, anything could happen in the, in the course of the 12 months. You know, sort of like an exciting, you know, an exhilarating edge to that, you know. And also the downsides of being just like unsure of like what could happen. But yeah, um, I'll, I'll have to wait and see on Guns N' Roses one. I'll, I would be, I'll, it's been very cool if Guns N' Roses released new CD this year, but you know, I, I guess I'll have to wait and see guys and guys that one. And, um, that one is currently untitled too, so I'm going to get on to Iron Man and, oh, Iron Man, I absolutely love Iron Man. And, but yeah, the final Frontier, which was released in 2010, was, really, was a really good album, but I remember the band saying at the time that that was like their 15th studio album or something, and um, they uh, were thinking of like um, quitting. You know, but recently, you know, they've been, they've been touring, you know, around like crazy. Like, they played, they played Download last year, you know, that was a phenomenal set. You know, like, they had that Spitfire flying, flying up ahead of the gig before they started playing, like, Moonchild, the first song. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, and they've also been doing, like, the Made in England uh, tour from last year, which, you know, was sort of, like, encompassed some good for their 80s material, I believe. But, yeah, it's been really cool if I had Made released now this year. I mean, I had Made in, like, you know, one of the best British bands around. I had Made in. Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, you know, the three best British bands of all time, in my opinion. And again, I'm in this new studio, I'm guys, guys, is currently untitled. And um, yeah, hopefully when it comes out, it'll be amazing. But it's just a case of if, I mean, um, it was like, there was four year gap between 2006 and Matter of Life and Death of the Final Frontier. But it's just a case of still like, clinging to the idea that the Final Frontier was, you know, I mean, last studio album. Hopefully it won't be because, you know, these legends deserve to go on as long as possible. But I guess that's the way it's, it's a bit, like it's a bit like Guns N' Roses, like it's really cool if I made and did release a new studio album this year, but, you know, in the end we'll just have to wait and see. So, um, and then we get on to Judas Priest. Now, Judas Priest, you know, again, another classic British band, so, you know, they have like songs like Living After Midnight and Breaking the Law, for instance, and, you know, Rob Halford's one of the most, Ama you know, it's, you know, it's one of the most amazing vocalists of all time. You know, and Judas Priest have produced some like really, you know, amazing classic songs throughout the course of their career. And um, yeah, it's been really cool if Judas Priest, you know, new album drops. I mean, I'll definitely be checking it out if you know Judas Priest do as decide to release um, a new CD this year. And uh, that's currently on time too. And uh, yeah, they're down to Motley Crue now. Motley Crue, you know, they were the, the big hitters in the 1980s in you know, glam metal scene. But um, you know, with their, you know, they're saying calling it a day, you know, like touring touring around the world now, you know, to like, you know, give glee fans like, you know, leave something in their memory, you know, of the band. So I just I just can't see the band releasing another album and do it unless they release the album and like not tour it or just like do a small tour, but. You know, I, with all the hype about them quitting, I just can't see them doing another album in the world tour. I mean, you know, call, call my sources terrible, if you will, but I, I got, you know, most of where, you know, which albums come out this year from Wikipedia. So, <laughs> you know, that's just the way it is. You know, so, so Wikipedia's true most of the time, so. And, um, yeah, I just can't see Motley Crue releasing a new album this year, but, you know, it's really cool. I mean, you know, Motley Crue, you know, I've released a ton of amazing songs, you know, throughout the course of their career, you know. And, you know, they're held in high esteem by a lot of people because they're really, really good at what they do. You know, their guitarist, you know, like Nicky Six, you know, is, is a fantastic guitarist, you know. They were pioneers, you know, a big player to the glam metal scene, so I guess let's wait and see what happens with uh, a new Motley Crue studio album. And um, they're going to No Doubt. Now, um, you know, No Doubt is about the only thing from Gwen Stefani that I actually, get, that I actually dig, you know. Um, you know, No Doubt actually made some really good songs, and it's really cool if they released a new record this year. I think they reformed sometime, like, a few years ago, but I can't really remember, like, much about that because I haven't really, like, checked out a band, you know, in, in, in quite a while. So, um, yeah, but I'd, I'd definitely check out um, a new album if, um, no doubt, decided to release 
and the album this year, Guys and Girls. And um, you know, most of the last last couple of albums that <coughs> from bands I've been talking about, you know, are currently untitled because, as I said, it's like it's really early in the year, so you know, it's it's you know, it, it, some bands still haven't decided on like track name, you know, album names. <laughs> Or, or titles or anything like that. So yeah, I guess it's just a you know the start of year is always like a real long like waiting game, and it's you know as I, as I say it's like exciting, especially you know for, for fans of music. So it's all good. Now we get on to the Offspring. Now the Offspring, you know, classically are a '90s punk band. You know, <coughs> yeah. So sorry, was, was that, you know, I'm sorry to lose my voice, but it just back into the cold and stuff. And um, yeah, the Offspring, you know, have released several like smashes, smash hits about. You know, creators such as like, you know, Why Don't You Get a Job, uh, Pretty Fly for a White Guy, Want You Bad, etc. I mean, their last studio album, Rise and Fall, Rage and Grace, which was released in 2008, was absolutely phenomenal. You know, it really, you know, reaffirmed the offspring as a great, you know, um, act, you know, in the punk scene. I mean, you had songs like Hammerhead, for instance, which was just phenomenal, you know. It's sort of, you know, it's sure that Offspring still haven't lost the fire that they built up, you know, with the songs that they released in the nineteen nineties. And then we got on to Red Hot Chili Peppers. Now it's been three years since I'm with You was released in two thousand ten, which was the fall of two thousand six Stadium Arcadium double album. And um, I'm with You was really you know, it was really, really good, like you know, it's just continued like the, the Red Hot Chili Peppers magic just like releasing great Catchy songs. I mean, when you when you got like the greatest, you know, bass player ever in your ranks in the form of Flea, you know, it's going to be hard, you know, to like make music that that sucks, you know, because most of Red Hot Chili Peppers' music is amazing, you know, e even their eighty stuff, which you know is obviously not as refined <coughs> as like their ninety stuff, for instance, you know, it's still, you know, it still possesses a lot of power and a lot of like funky elements in Red Hot Chili Peppers' eighties work. And um, yeah, it's be really cool, everyone. If I actually I did release a new studio down this year, I imagine it's be along the same lines as their other material. You know, it's not like funky sort of sound. I know, like John John Frusciante left the game, which was a shame because you know when he returned for 1999's like California Cation, you know, recorded that and 2002's By the Way, as well as 2006's Stadium Arcade, you know, those are three, you know, really classic Red Chili Peppers albums, and I'm, I'm with you, you know, it isn't like how it was regarded in, you know, as high as those simply because of Josh Frush Scam who doesn't feature on the recording, but I still feel that I'm with you still, you know, a, a really good, uh, solid album, so hopefully when Red Hot Chili Peppers decides to release their next album, it'll be, you know, just as strong, you know, or if not stronger, you know, it just... It just depends, you know, I guess we'll have to wait and see. And um, that album is also currently untitled Guys and Gals. And um, I've gotten to Rise Against, which, you know, Rise Against, you know, they're sort of like the modern day, like, political punk band, you know. They've written some amazing songs, you know. Um, you know, their last album, Endgame, was, I think it's called Endgame? Because so, I know they really at the same time as, like, a Megadeth release as well. And, um, yeah, Endgame was really, really good. And uh, we also have songs, you know, like classic songs from, you know, songs like Drones or, you know, Ready to Fall, Prior of Refugee, Re-Education Crew Labour, you know, uh, was it Army of One, Army of Two, something, from, um, you know, their uh, 2006 album, The Suffering Witness, and 2008's Appeal to Reason albums. And, um, yeah, I think um, Rise Against, you know, the, you know, they're consistent, you know, the material they're releasing, you know, it, it, you know, it could put out, like, really quality material, you know, on a consistent basis and uh, you know that's what makes the band so good. I also have my fact that like petitioning you know for like animal rights and stuff you know because I think it helps you know for you know helps promote like awareness issues and stuff you know and make you know the world like a more safer and fairer place you know and I think you know I respect Rise Against you know as musicians and as people too and I really hope that their um, next studio album is you know absolutely phenomenal too. And then we get on to Soundgarden. Oh wow! It's been how it's been three years since. Um, it's been three years. Uh, King Animals was either released in two thousand ten or two thousand twelve. I can't remember. So um, I should have done my research on this. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, Soundgarden. You know the classic grunge band. You know class, class Soundgarden. And you know are one of the biggest you know, bands from the nineties alternative rock scene. You know, they've really they released several great albums in the nineteen nineties in the nineteen nineties. They included nineteen ninety one's Bad Moods Finger, nineteen ninety four Super Amount, and nineteen ninety six's Down on the Upside, which was their final release. And um, yeah, King Animal shot of like showcase like, you know, Sam Garden like returning to their roots but also adding, you know, like a bit of like fresh relevance into their work. And um, you know, it it was really cool. And um, yeah, I hope, you know, Chris Cornell's an absolutely fantastic vocalist, you know, he's not lost in touch. 
you know, I mean, that dude can, like, just, just wail, you know, ridiculously high. Obviously not as high as, like, the Aaron Tyron, Bruce Dickinson, Pike Med, and, you know, or, or Miles Kennedy, Walter Bridge. But, y you know, um, <clears throat> Chris Cornell still an exceptionally, you know, amazing vocalist. And, uh, yeah, I hope when Soundgarden do release their new album, uh, Guys and Girls, if it's this year, or, you know, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But it's, it's been really cool. I mean, you know, Soundgarden, you know, they do put out a lot of consistent material. You know, and I love the sound of, you know, their music a lot. So, um, yeah, I guess let's wait and see. And that album is currently untitled too, as is the Rise Against release. Then we got on to Tool, which I talked about um, already. Oh, it's been like eight years this year since 10,000 Days. But, you know, Tool are perfectionists. They can take as long as they want, you know. Their, you know, their record of putting out quality material, you know, it's, you know, it dates back to their, you know, inception, like, you know, as I said, the Nice Size Two up here EP, you know, followed by Nice Nine Degrees, Undertow, Nice Size Six's Anemia, 2001's Lateralis, and 2006's 10,000 Days release. And, um, yeah, I think a lot of Tool fans will be hoping for a return to, you know, their roots, you know, like 2001's Lateralis, for instance, because, you know, 2006's 10,000 Days, it was an absolutely phenomenal album, but, some fans didn't like it because, you know, it was more, you know, it was only 11 tracks long and, like, about a quarter of it because this was, you know, like, interludes, but, you know, the proper songs that were less, which, you know, like, The Wings for Marie, Parts 1 and 2, you know, right into Rosetta Stoned, Intention, you know, Vicarious, you know, which is all phenomenal songs, in my humble and honest opinion. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I think, I have heard snippets of um, a new Tool song on the internet, and um, it sounded really, really good. I, I know the band was saying, like, want to place emphasis on Justin Chancellor's bass on this release, and I think that's a good idea because Justin Chancellor, you know, it's hard to distinguish who my favourite bass player could be between Flea and Justin Chancellor, but, um, you know, they're both phenomenal, and, um, yeah, I guess that's where it's, it's been really cool when Tool's new studio album drops, guys and girls, because, you know, that band is, you know, they're just, like, one of my absolute all-time favourites, you know, in the progressive, sort of, like, art, rock, metal, sort of, like, genre that, you know, I absolutely adore, you know, in music. And then finally, we get to new Linkin Park album. Ah, oh, well, Linkin Park, you know, their first two studio albums, Hybrid Theory and Meteor, I know the band are playing Hybrid Theory in its entirety at Download 2014 next year. And, um, yeah, I was... I do like 2007's Minutes to Midnight because it's different, but, you know, it doesn't completely alienate fans of Hybrid Theory and Meteora. And, uh, but it was with 2010's A Thousand Sons that I kind of got lost with the band. Um, such as, I didn't, I didn't like the album all. Like, it was more, like, electronic based, but, you know, it was less guitar heavy and more, you know, as I said, like, electronics based, you know. I just felt, it sort of like, you know, it didn't feel like, you know, the Linkin Park that I'd fallen in love with previously. But then, you know, the return with uh, Living Things, which I thought was real good. Like, again, it contained, like, the electronic elements, but, you know, this time around it actually sounded good. You know, and, um, yeah, it's really interesting what Linkin Park decided to do with their next release, because I know, like, Chester Bennington will be, you know, switching schedules between, you know, working with both Linkin Park and Stone Temple Pilots, you know, because he's the new um, Stone Temple Pilots front man to, you know, who succeeded Scott Wyland, and, you know, it's been also interesting that Stone Temple Pilots signed his re release new album in 2014 with Chester Bennington, um, because the release of the High Rise EP last year, which I... Yeah, you know, I didn't really, like I said, I didn't really used to dig, like, Chester Bennington um, on vocals for Stone Temple Pilots, but, you know, his it's, it's vocal style sort of, like, grew on me, and, um, yeah, I think his it, it, style really suits, you know, Stone Temple Pilots. I mean, he even said himself that his vocal style is based around, you know, the, the one from Scott Weiland, and, um, you know, you can definitely tell that in there. And, um, yeah, it's, I think it's been really, really good if Stone Temple Pilots put out an album with um, Chester Bennington. Uh, Stone Temple Pilots' 2010 uh, self-titled... No, 2010, was it? Was it 2010? Yeah, it probably was 2010. Or at least their self-titled sixth studio album. You know, the last ones featured Scott Weiland on vocals. And, um, yeah, that was, it was good, but it just didn't showcase, like, heaviness, you know, from songs from, you know, albums such as, like, Car or Purple, or Number 4, for instance, you know, and if Stone Temple Pilots do get back to, like, their heavier, you know, sounding material, I think it'll make for a really, really killer release. I mean, STP are one of my favourite bands, you know, of all time. You know, I actually released their, really, I actually received their album Purple today, which I bought from eBay, and, um, you know, I was, I was blown away by, it, you know, most of Stone Temple Pilots' songs are incredible, you know. And, um, yeah, going to finally get on to a new band I discovered today, Guys and Girls, which I posted on Facebook for you to check out, which is called, um, Atlantic... 
like um, something, whatever, whatever they're called, Atlantic, whatever. Uh, I've just got a CD actually, so Atlantic. Um, mm, anyway. Atl Atlantic Tide. That's what Atlantic Tide. Like, you know, when I heard them, I thought, how the hell are these band, this band unsigned? You know, they're a brand new band at Atlantic Tide that um, I heard through uh, a Metal Hammer CD, which was based around, you know, bands based on influences from Black Sabbath. And, uh, you know, I was blown away, you know, the sort of like emulate the sound that, you know, I absolutely love, you know, like, good busting guitar solos, you know, nice, hard, groovy, you know, melodic riffs that rock and, and are heavy. And uh, it's really cool if these guys, like, put out their debut studio album this year. Um, these guys released some, like, vinyl works, you know, I think there's, like, like, three. It's got, like, you know, a side A and a side B. And uh, that's really cool, like, it shows guys sort of, like, vintage, you know, style. And like, this band's sort of, like, the perfect, like, you know, sort of, like, like mirror, sort of, like, all the things like about music. Like, you know, releasing, you know, music the proper way, you know, through getting in the studio and recording it. And also, like, through vinyls as well. You know, it's really cool if these guys put out, you know, resigned to, like, a, a label and put out their debut album, you know, this year. You know, that'd be um, absolutely phenomenal, silly, because, you know, Atlantic Tide, you know, these guys are actually, you know, I actually like them better than Metallica, which is surprising because Metallica are my favourite band. But, you know, there's only one sure way if this band's good. If this band is going to be my favourite band, they're going, to, they're going to have to pull out put out an absolutely killer David Studio album this year, and hopefully that'll be the case. So, um, yeah, guys, guys, hope you've been, hope you've all enjoyed my um, albums that I'm looking forward to in 2014, and also what to expect from my channel this year. And um, yeah, maybe look out for a new review from myself either tomorrow or the day after. Hopefully it'll be tomorrow because I'm aiming to make this year one of the most productive years of my life. And um, yeah, hopefully you'll be seeing something fresh from me so it's like an album review. As I said, either tomorrow or the day after. So until then guys, stay safe, stay strong and I will see y'all in the future. And uh, as I've said before... Happy New Year and may it bring all the best luck in the world to you because that's what y'all deserve. Till then, amen.